Oh, yes. Mm. Where's Rachel? Where is she? Where's you, Harvey? Where, where did you put her? Where did Harvey put Rachel? Hi, hello. Hello. You're watching Nerdish. Nerdish. I lost my shoe. You gotta put your shoe back oh, on. That go the other. Very good. What are we doing here? Well, we do SAT, ACT prep for everyone. Yes. And the question is not where is Rachel, but when. 8 to 9.30 p.m. That's when Rachel is. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Watch it. Just see what it's like. It's for free. All week long. You can ask us questions like where's Rachel? And what you do with Rachel? And where is Harvey Dent? They're both studying for the SAT. It's a very important test if you want to go to college or university. I should have said university first because it rhymes. <sighs> oh, 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 that's Catwoman. That's so oh, bless. I think we know Catwoman because we're Batman. Okay, okay. The stream has begun, and what a thick stream it will be. Woo! I'm Brady. I'm Brady's partner. And I am Brady's partner's partner. For and now. the three of us together are... Levi. Levi. That's right. Three of us together are Levi. So and are we opposites, or are we reciprocals? I think we're inverses. Oh. Uh... Yeah. If you plug me in, we get you. So if you plug you in, you get me... And that's the inverse. Function. Function. We could talk about inverses today. They'd be kind of fun. For you. Do they ever come up on the... No. They really don't. Do they? For you? They come up on the subject test. Oh, man. People are populating the stream. How is it going, everyone? Let's see. Matthew, are you here? Robot Dancer, are you here? We got questions for both of yous. Ring Matthews. That's his name. All right, Ring Matthews. Ring Matthews. Ring Matthews. One second, Ring Matthews. Here we go. We're doing this. Come on. Is it is it control? No, it's alt. It's alt. Okay. Oh, very good. Here we go. Hi, Ring Matthews. Peep this. Uh, Matthews, you still want us to do this? I think this is the first thing you asked about. We're gonna, we're gonna do it. We'll do it. Exponent rules first. Hey, robot. Hello, robot. <clears throat> How are you? Robot. Anyway, uh, we'll just do this anyway. Okay, so the function b of n is equal to 2 to the n power. A binary code word of length n is a string of zeros and ones with n digits. 
For example, 1001 is a binary code word of length 4. The number of binary code words, b of n, of length n is shown above. If the length is increased from n to n plus 1, how many more binary code words will there be? What, do you want to do this one? You read it, so I feel like I should do it. Right. There are no logs in SAT. Is that true? Yeah. OK. Um, it's good to know. I mean, like, I, I would say you don't absolutely need to know logs anyway. You just need, Well, you need to know For the how ACT. logs become um, exponents, functions. and then you can do all the same stuff. All right, so we take our input, and we put that as the exponent of 2. So 2 to the n plus 1. Oh, geez, 2 to the n plus 1, OK? So the question is, how do we compare these two here? 2 to the n plus 1 can be split apart. And I will show you how by first showing you something else. 2 to the 5th times 2 to the 3rd is equal to 2 to the 8th. You add the exponents, OK? That's an exponent rule you should have down. Ring Matthews, you probably want to talk about exponent rules, so this is something we can talk about. So if I give you a slightly different situation like this, 2 to the x times 2 to the 4th. Normally, you add the exponents, but here there's a variable. It doesn't change the rules of exponents, though. We still add the exponents. So this right here, you can change it to 2 to the x plus 4, and it's the same as that. Okay. So knowing that we can go that way, we can go backwards from here. So 2 to the n plus 1 would also be 2 to the n times 2 to the first power. Okay. 2 to the first power is just 2. So this is going to be equal to 2 times what we had before 2 to the n. The question is, how many more binary codes will there be? There will be twice as many binary code words. Um, they're not giving us an actual number to start with, but whatever number it would be, there will be twice as many. I think that that's probably going to be in the answers here. Uh, yeah, since they're asking how many more, it'll uh, you can either say double or you can say there are 2 to the n more. Not 2 to the n more. Yeah, because this 2 times 2 to the n is the same thing as 2 to the n plus 2 to the n, right? 2 times something is just that thing added together, right? So te like if they're asking for an addition, then True. it would be you're adding 2 to the n. Beautiful. Yeah. Well done. Well done. What is the answer to this question? Well, you're right here. It's going to be 2 to the n more, because they're not asking how many times more code words will there be. Yeah, it just depends on how they're asking the question. But I'm going to guess that if they're asking how many more, it means addition, which means that you're right here. It's going to be 2 to the n words more. Oh, this man. Is, this is an exceedingly difficult question and would is way harder than anything on either test. I don't think they'd ever ask something No, like they this. would not. No, they would not. Cool question, though. I think it was 2n. I can check. Yeah, it makes sense that it's 2 to the n. Do I add one? Yes, I do want to do the next one. Okay. Are you going to set that up for me? Absolutely. Oh, you are my favorite. No. Yes. Oh, oh perfect. Pretty perfect. Yeah. OK, so we have this whole big thing, and there's a lot of exponents. Um, Ring Matthews, you said you wanted to do exponents. I don't think there's much use in doing this problem if you are uncomfortable with all of the exponent rules. Do you want to go over the, you know, the basic exponent rules like product rule, quotient rule, power rule, x to the 0, um, things like that, negative exponents, fractional exponents? Do you want to talk about those things first and get those listed down, or, or are you comfortable with them and you want to do this problem first or now? Yeah, let's go over them first. Great. OK. <clears throat> so I'm going to write them all here. And then we will get to how, and then we'll apply them to this problem, because it actually works pretty nicely. OK. So to start out, the easiest exponent rule, where's my other marker? Oh, OK. We have x to the 0 power. That equals 1. OK, so any number to the 0 power is 1. You can always do that. OK, if it's x plus 8 to the 0, or, you know, x plus 8 parentheses, quantity to the 0, it's still 1. It doesn't matter. Anything to the 0 power is 1. That's our first rule. 
Then we're going to do x to the first power. That's going to be x. We'll just keep that there. So this is, this is mainly, you know, if you see something, well, we'll get to this later, but if you don't have an exponent, that means it's assumed to be 1. So we, never, we generally don't write x to the first or, or 5 to the first power. 5 to the first power is 5. It's just itself. So we have those two out of the way. And then from here, we have x to the a times x to the b. That equals x to the a plus b. I'm going to turn this off for now. OK. Does this one make sense? If you multiply, you have to have the same base. So you, if you have 2 to the 4th times 3 to the 4th, or to the, what, it doesn't matter, nothing happens here. You just have to do this because your bases aren't the same. You have to have 2 to the 3rd times, let's say, 2 to the 4th. This would be 2 to the 3 plus 4, which is 2 to the 7th power. Okay? And this should make sense because 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, and now you're multiplying that by 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And technically, you're doing these three first, and then you're multiplying it by those four. But multiplication and division are commutative. This is a super important point that people screw up all of the time on the SAT and ACT, is they don't use the fact that multiplication and division is commutative. So if you have 2 times 3 times 5 divided by 6 times 3 times 2, you can do this in any order that you want. That's why you're allowed to cross things out, right? Which you're used to, but that's why. Because you can, you can do, you know, this is multiplication up here, this is division, this is multiplication. It doesn't matter any order. As soon as you do something like plus one, now you have a problem. You cannot cancel out these twos anymore. That doesn't work because you have plus. Addition and subtraction are not commutative. No, unless addition it's, is. Well, sorry? Addition is commutative. Commut addition is commutative with itself. By itself only. If you have 6 plus 7 plus 8, you can do it in any order. But if you have 6 minus 7 plus 8, then you have to do order of operations there. Wh when you mix addition, subtraction with multiplication, division, now you can't, you can't just do things in whatever order. So coming back to here, we have this. Now the opposite direction here is x to the a divided by x to the b. So I'm going to rewrite that as x to the a over x to the b. It can be in either fashion. This is probably how you'll see it more often. This equals x to the a minus b. OK? This idea still holds true. Let's say we have x cubed divided by x squared. Well, this is x times x times x over x times x. So cancel, cancel, you're left with x, which makes sense because this should be x to the 3 minus 2, which is x to the first, which by that rule is just x, which is what we had. Yeah? Is everybody happy? Named Matthew and everybody named anything otherwise also happy. These are the, you know, these are the basic ones to the 0 power to the first power. Great. And then we are, now we're getting into this stuff. Now, the next one in this group, and then we'll move to the weird ones, is the power rule. x to the a power raised to the b power. This is not the same thing. Well, we'll get to that. So this is going to be x to the a times b. OK? So if you have a power to a power, you multiply them. And this makes sense. Let's do x, let's do x cubed squared. Well, x cubed squared is going to be x times x times x squared. x times x times x squared is x times x times x times itself. So x times x times x. This is x to the sixth, right? You have six of them. They're all multiplied together. x to the sixth. That's what you do when you multiply these two. That's that rule. Does that make sense? You can try it with any numbers that you want. Be careful. This probably won't come up, but if you have x squared cubed, you have to do order of operations here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. x squared cubed. Order of operations tell you you have to do exponents first, but well, this little exponent is what, happens, what has to happen first. So this is technically x to the 8th, because 2 cubed is 8. Now you have x to the 8th. 
So just be aware you have to have the parentheses to show that the little, you know, the, the first exponent is happening first and then you raise the whole thing to that power because that this is the work that's actually going on behind the scenes. Let me know if you have questions on that. Now we're, I'm going to erase this as we move on to the last two pieces, which are harder, in my personal opinion. This is nice and simple. You know, multiplication goes to addition, division goes to subtraction. Those two kind of mirror each other. And then powers goes to multiplication. Be gentle. I'm going to be gentle? Yep. OK. Was I being ungentle? No, just with this, with this coming problem. This coming problem does not like that people are not gentle with it. OK. Yeah, I'm not doing the problem quite yet. When you get there, be gentle. OK. Um, the next one, I'm going to do it in pink because it's a little bit harder. This is, uh, I'll do negatives first. x to the negative a power is 1 over x to the a power. Okay? So that means that when you have a negative exponent, you put it on the other side of the fraction. That's it. So x to the negative 5 equals 1 over x to the fifth. This, this is going to happen because let's, let's actually do um, 4 squared, 4 to the first, 4 to the 0, 4 to the negative 1, 4 to the negative 2. So 4 squared is 16. We know that 4 to the first by this is 4. 4 to the 0 is 1. As we, and, and this should make sense. As you go 4 cubed, you're just going to do 4 squared times 4 again. So every time as you go up, you multiply by 4. So as you're going down the ladder, you're dividing by 4, which should continue as you go into the negatives. So 4 to the negative 1 is 1 over 4. And then you're going to divide by 4 again. And you'll get, bear with me, 1 over 16, which is 1 over 4 squared. I should actually write that one first. So this is 1 over 4 squared, which is 1 over 16. Does this idea make sense? This is, this is very important. This is harder than the other ones, in my opinion. And it's very easy to mess up. So let me know if, you, if you're not a fan of this. Um, I think this, we don't need the radical. Brady, can you check? We could, I could stay away from fractional exponents for now. Just do these, do this problem, and then um, we can come back to fractional exponents. I'll look at this word right now. OK. OK, so that's negative exponents. Now, this also holds true. If you have, let's say, x squared over x to the negative fifth, all right? We have x squared. We also have x to the negative fifth. x to the negative fifth means that you need to put it on the other side of the fraction. So if it starts on top, like this one does, we have 4 to the negative 2. That's technically 4 to the negative 2 over 1, right? We're going to put it on the bottom. So now we have 1 over 4 to the 4 squared. So we've gotten rid of the negative exponent. Yeah, I know, I know it's on the SAT, but for, for, this, for your question specifically that you put up. We will do it regardless. So when it's on top, it goes to the bottom. When it starts on the bottom, it goes to the top. So this becomes x squared times x to the fifth. You can put it over 1 if you'd like. OK? So the, the x to the negative 5 goes to the top and becomes positive. That's it. Now we can use product rule, which tells us that we have x squared, or x to the, x to the 2 plus 5 power, which is x to the 7. The other way we can do this is just use quotient rule, which is subtraction with division of exponents. So now we, we're going to go from here to here. We'll have x squared minus a negative 5, because this exponent is a negative 5. This is the same thing as 2 plus 5. We just have 2 minus a negative 5. So it's still x to the seventh power. Okay. Either way works. You just have to follow the rules correctly. Okay. So with that in mind, let's go to the question, and then we can come back and do the last exponent rule. Mm. 
Okay, so for this question, we have all, we have this big mess. But as I said, with multiplication and division being commutative, we don't really care about the order. We can do this stuff in any order that we want. Um, also, this first, the first, it's not a term by itself, but the a to the seventh and then the a to the negative third on the bottom. You'd think that you have to start some stuff there, but if you notice, it's all raised to the zero power. So it's gone, right? It's just one. So we can just nix the whole beginning of this expression here. Um, and that's what we're going to do after I erase this thing. OK. So now we're just left with, let's do this in blue, I guess. We're left with a cubed times a to the negative 2 to the fourth power over a to the seventh. OK. Well, we, we're going to have to follow order of operations, which means um, parentheses, which we have. Um, you can't just put this on the bottom because it has this to the fourth power first. So I'm going to do this piece first. So that will be a cubed. And then this is going to be product rule, right? No, sorry, power rule, this one, right? We have parentheses around this one. We have a power to a power. So that's going to be negative 2 times 4. So we're going to get a to the negative 8th power there, all over a to the 7th. Um, now, I could do two things here to deal with this negative power here. I could put it on the bottom and have a to the 8th go to the bottom. Or I could just do product rule, because it's multiplication, and I just have to keep the, the negative in mind. So that's what I'll do, actually. So I have now a cubed minus 8, or plus a negative 8, over a to the 7th. So this will be a to the negative 5th over a to the 7th. Now let's do the other thing. Let's, let's do um, this negative exponent rule. So I'm going to bring the a to the 5th down to the bottom to join its buddy. So now we have 1 over a to the 7th times a to the 5th. This, we're going to do product rule on the bottom. So that'll be 1 over a to the 12th, 5 plus 7. OK? So I think, and we're not done, because they want this to look, it says the expression above simplifies to a to the x power. What is x? Well, this is not a to an x power. This is 1 over a to that power. So we're going to put the a to the 12th on top. So this becomes a to the negative 12. And if a to the x equals that, then, we, then of course we know that x equals negative 12. Does that make sense, Matthew? And everybody else, if you're watching. I'm going to switch over to Robot's first question. OK. Robot, are you still here? Can you say hi? I got up too quickly. I feel lightheaded. Oh, no. Decapitation? No. That's my. That's how light my head will be. Just cut it off. It'll just start floating upward. Because everybody floats down here, right? Say it. Everybody floats down here. Yay! I like that. It's fun. It's yep. happy. Yep. Makes sense. Good. Robot. Okay. Robot dancer. Good robot. We're dance. If you're not here, we're gonna go. Keep going with bring Matthew's questions. Yeah, and then I can until robot responds. I can do the next thing, which is fractional exponents. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So now let's do fractions and exponents. I think we may have just gotten a, nope. OK. Fractional exponents. Let's do this last one. So this should be pink. This is x to the a over b power. OK? So that's a divided by b equals the b root of x to the a where a is inside the radical, or it's, or, and it's equal to the b root of x to the a power where a is on the outside of the radical. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, So I'm going to use them interchangeably. I'm not going to pay attention to that. They are the same thing. So let me show you examples of this. This is where radicals come in. 
any radical can be expressed as an exponent, which is actually easier generally for your brain to understand. So if we are going, let's do, how do we do pink? I also gotta erase this. Um, so let's say we have x to the 2 thirds power. That will be the cube root of x squared, okay? The way I remember which, you know, the, which part of this fraction in the exponent goes in which part of the radical is that you're dividing by a number. When you divide, things sort of just get smaller. Of course, that's not always true, but the division you think smaller, radicals you think smaller, so the, the radicand, Brady, what is, the, what is the little number in front of the radical called? Radita? Uh That is a Pokemon of generation one. I think number 32? Is it Radicate? It's neither of those, Bert. All right, I'll look it up. So we're talking about exponents here, or? No, the, yeah, the, like the little three in cube root of x. What oh, is that called? Interesting, okay. Let me... um, not that it matters, of course, but um, let's do another one. Let's say... What is, what is uh, ra the square root of x? So the, the radicand is the thing that's under the symbol. So in that case, x to the fifth is the radicand. The index is what you're thinking of. The index. Three right. is the index. So, the x, so this x is the radicand, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, okay. All right. So radical x is equal to x to what power? What should the exponent for this, the right side of that equation be? Matthew, I, I'm relying on your answer. I think Matthew lags sometimes, and that's part of it. Mm. Mm. Don't mm me. No, I'm agreeing with you. I know. X to the one half power, exactly. X to the one half. Technically, that's a one there. Technically, there's a two there. Okay. Now let's start putting things together. If we have x to the negative 2 fifths power times, no, let's leave it there. That's, that's enough for right now. x to the negative 2 fifths power. What does that look like with a radical? Because you do square root x to cancel out the x to the squared. Yes. Yeah. Also, so tell me this, but yeah, if you have x, if you have the square root of x equals 5, what you learn to do when you're, when you're trying to solve for x is you square both sides, right? And that gives you x equals 25. But if you write this guy as x to the 1 half power equals 5, now if you square both sides, you're going to get this 25 on the, same, on the other side, but because this, this still works because you're going to do product rule here. You have a power to a power. 1 half times 2, as you said, is 1, so now we have x to the first power. So you've done the same thing. It doesn't matter if you keep things as radicals or you keep them as fractions. I like fractions personally. Not if you're just doing a, you know, what, you know, simplify this radical. Sure, keep it as a radical. But if you have a big, messy expression with radicals everywhere and negative exponents and fractional exponents. Put everything into the exponent. Uh, the fifth, yeah, fifth root of x to the negative 2. And if you're trying to get rid of negatives, you can write it as 1 over the fifth root of x squared, right, if you're getting rid of negatives. And they, they often like doing that. Okay. So I can give you... An example, and then um, are there more of, do you have other exponent questions? I can give you one right now. Ring Matthew. I've been assuming your name is Matthew. Do you want me to call you Matthew or Matt or Ring? Ring. Call him. Ring. Is that, is that like an AI version of Golem? Gollum? Gollum. Okay. 
So yeah, let's let's do um, an example that requires you to really do a bunch of stuff. And by that, I'm just going to make I understand this concept, so you can go to the other questions. Great. All right. Fixed. All right. Let me sneak up there. Yeah. Yes, it's been a while. It has been a while. I'm sorry. It's okay. You didn't know. Well, that's true. And I couldn't have either. Oh, that one's fun. Is that Matthews? Hey, this one? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll set it. Okay. All right, Ring Matthew, we're going to do your box question. It's going to be fun. We're all going to have a lot of fun. If anyone says it's not going to be fun, Levi, is that person right or wrong? They're wrong. That's right. They're lying. Look at me. I'm behind a box. Um... I can put it on this side if you want. Um, you want to be lefty? Yeah. Yeah, why not? I'll be fine. Okay. I yeah. can also draw this for you. Nah. Okay. Just blow the whole thing up. Light a fuse. The problem is like, is this okay? Yeah. Oh, you mean this way? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The figure at the left is a square with side length four. Within it are four congruent right triangles and one small square. The bottom triangle has angle pi over six. It is a given. It is given that root two is 1.414 and root three is 1.732. Approximately, what is the side length of the small square in the center to the nearest hundred? All right. If you know your conversions well between radians and degrees, you'll know that pi over six is also 30 degrees. If you forget how to do that, you have to remember that the conversion rate is pi over 180 or 180 over pi. So if we have pi over 6, that's in radians. We want to change this to degrees. We have to multiply in a way. It's either 180 over pi or pi over 180 so that the pi's cancel out. So in which case, we're going to have 180 over pi, which is going to be the pi's cancel. 180 over 6 is going to be 30 degrees. All right. So those angles there that's, that's labeled pi over 6, those are all 30 degrees. And if we have 30 degrees in a right triangle, we have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. You can figure out the side lengths using Sokotoa, but if you know your 30, 60, 90 pattern, this is going to go a lot faster. So just a little recap. On the 30, 60, 90, so this is going to be the 30, this is going to be the 60. The one that's opposite 30, we call that x. The hypotenuse is going to be twice that, and the one opposite 60 is going to be that times root 3. All right? So in the picture, we get 4. Actually, it's kind of cut off right now. Um, let me change this a little bit. Okay, alt. There we go. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Okay. The side length on the top of the square is four, and it's a square, so all the sides are four. So this bottom triangle, this bottom triangle is gonna look like this. Oh, uh, Levi's already drawing it out. Oh, uh, Levi is a dual. He is such a doll, Levi. I'm such a doll. He is such a doll. I'm a doll. Yeah. Does this just do that? Yeah, right? Yeah, you're going to want to extend that. Yeah, you're getting it a little further, and then you... Yeah. Nice. What have I missed? It makes a square. Continue the line. Good, you're good. I just didn't know which line. No, yeah, five or six. Good. Levi's going to... He's drawing it so we can get rid of this big piece of paper. It's blocking everything. All right. Fours, right? Yeah. All right. You're going to keep the explanation. Obvi. Very good. He's a doll. So this right here, pi over 6 is 30 degrees, which means this is 60 degrees right here. And our, our hypotenuse is 4. That's our 2x side right there, OK? So the one that's opposite 30 is going to be half of that, which is going to be 2. Because 4 is standing in for 2x, what we have on the hypotenuse. So our x value must be 2, which means this is going to be 2, which means this side here is going to be 2 root 3. So this right here will be 2 root 3, OK? Now they're asking for the side length of the small square to the nearest hundredth. So we have to have a way of figuring out what the side length is. But we have a bunch of triangles here that are all congruent. 
So this is four, that's four. Um, all the ones that are the same side length are going to be, so let's see. This is also gonna be 30 degrees right here um, because that's just this two or three. Yeah, so this right here is two. Um, this right here is two and that's that applies for this, that applies for this. So, uh, and then this right here, those are all, oh, those are all the twos. We got that one, that one, that one. And then this one, two or three overlaps a little bit. Two is gonna be right there. Anyway, all of these long side lengths, that is the, this one here is a good example of it, are all two root three. So this thing to this thing are two root three, but then these short side lengths here are just two. So I'm gonna draw this line right here over here. We have this triangle coming out right there. We've got this right here. And this goes all the way down to the corner, which is right here, okay? This from here to here is two. This whole thing from here to here is two root three. So the difference will give us the side length of our square, because that is what's between, that is what we're missing. In order to get two, to get to two root three, we're missing this S. So that is the difference between two and two root three. So we're gonna take two root three, we're gonna subtract two from it, and that's gonna give us our S value. So I'm gonna factor out a two, we have root three minus one is equal to S, two times our root three, they want us to use 1.732, 1.732 minus one is equal to S, so that minus one will be two times 0.732 is equal to S, so our S value is going to be 1.464. Make sure of that. Two times 0 0.7 is 1.4, then 0 0.6, then 0.04. Yes, 1.464, okay? So converting degrees to radians, knowing your 30, 60, 90 triangles, writing all your side lengths everywhere you can, and finding that it's the difference between the two root three and the two is what you need for this one. Ring Matthews, how we doing? Did you like this? Would you buy this? We're, we'll sell it to you. We're, we're prepared to sell it to you. So just let me know. Another call out for Robot Dancer. Got it. Okay. Let's see what this next one is. Ah. Okay. You mind if I do this one? Um, you want to? Do. Where's it? There we go. There we go. I won't be around for much longer. Sorry for punching the microphone. I don't know if anybody heard that. Kids are all recalling in pain. What'd you say? They're all recoiling in pain. Oh. From the sound. I think it's pronounced recoiling. Recoiling. I think it's recoiling. Ring Matthews. Now, minus B over 2A is the vertex, which can be helpful in this case. Okay? I think it's ideal to use both. Which of the following could be the graph of y equals x squared plus 2x plus 2? So the easiest thing to check out first is what the y-intercept is going to be. If our equation is... They all have the same, though. Right. I'm going to guide them through that. Oh. You are amazing. Stop. Okay, the y-intercept is this c term over here. Because if x is 0, these terms here don't matter. They go away, and we just have y equals 2. The problem is that all four of these graphs have a y-intercept of 2. So that right there eliminates it. All right, the next thing is they're all pointing upward, so we're fine with that. The big difference is here. Number one, how many times they cross the x-axis? This one here, a, crosses it twice. c does not. d crosses it twice. b does not. So the number of solutions is going to help us figure this out. And yes, you are right. Um, the discriminant here tells you what the number of solutions to a, a quadratic is going to be. So the discriminant is that part in the quadratic formula under the square root, b squared minus 4ac. All right, this thing right here, that is the discriminant. This marker is not doing well. So with quadratics, you can either have two solutions, it crosses the x-axis twice, 
you could have one solution where you get a vertex on the x-axis. All right? Or you can have zero solutions. And in the quadratic formula, what causes that is that square root. If you have something under the square root that's negative, you're going to get an imaginary solution or a complex solution. So it's not going to actually touch the x-axis on the real plane. So b squared minus 4ac is the thing under the square root. This thing is lethal. All right, It is flammable. It's potentially explosive. This is what's going to cause you to have either two solutions, one solution, or zero solutions. And here's how this works. If it is positive, if it's greater than 0, you're going to get two real solutions. If it's equal to 0, you're going to get one solution. And if it is less than 0, you're going to get no solutions. Now, just to reiterate, these are in reference to real solutions. You're always going to have two roots. They might just be complex. These are all the real solutions right here. All right. So the discriminant of this thing right here is going to be b squared, which is 2. So that's going to be 2 squared minus 4. Our a value is 1. Our c value is 2. So this is 4 minus 8, which is negative 4. Our discriminant is negative. Therefore, it's going to have zero solutions. So we can cross out A. That's wrong. And D is also wrong. All right. So now we have C and B, both of which have no x-intercepts, which is good. That's what we want. The big difference between them is where the vertex is. This is where your other formula ring, Matthews, that you brought up is going to help. All right. The x-coordinate of a vertex of a quadratic is minus B over 2A. So our b value, again, is 2. So this is going to be minus 2 over 2 times our a value, which is going to be 1. This is going to give us negative 2 over 2, which is going to be negative 1. So the x-coordinate of our vertex is negative 1. b is the answer here, because you see that the x-coordinate of that vertex is to the left of the y-axis, so it's going to be negative. That's what we have here. Um, just a little add-on, if you wanted to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, you just plug the x-coordinate of the vertex into your equation, and that'll spit out your y-value. Um, but yeah, it's going to be b because of all the reasons that we just talked about. Ring Matthews, make sense? The next question, did you like it? Was it fun? You feel like you learned something. You feel like you want to just go tell your friends about it. Good. All right, Levi, you're up. Well, we should maybe talk about that blue thing in the bottom corner of the screen. You're right, we should. What time is it? Uh, you got time. Very 41. good. All right. So Levi brought up something that I should have said before that I forgot about. There's this blue thing down here. So it's a rectangle. It's so blue. It's got a length and it's got a width. And it's one of our sponsors. Accelerate is also one of our sponsors. Accelerate is us as a tutoring company. Yeah, we sponsor ourselves. Yeah. It's important to self-sponsor and self-advocate. And to self-abdicate. Right. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, you invert. Also self-defenestrate, or auto-defenestrate. Auto-defenestrate. Right. Which means to throw oneself out of a window. Yes. It's important that one does that at least once in one's life. Yes. Um, so Alta Ipsum is a program that you can get on your phone or your computer. Will Levi tell them about it? Well, if you have a test, you can put that test into Alta Ipsum. You take that test, the piece of paper, you put it into the app, and it'll tell you when the test is, likely right now. But if you do it beforehand, before you even have the test, the app will actually tell you, you know, it'll set up a study schedule for you. So it can, it can you know, alleviate some of, a lot of the stress that goes into planning things because it basically plans things for you. It helps you track things so you can see things visually. Scheduling-wise, scoring-wise, so you can track your grades, things like that. You can set goals! Goals. Yeah, you can set goals. You can track your progress towards making those goals. It's got a pretty good sense of what you need to get on a certain assignment in order to raise your grade to a certain letter. He's uh, The guy who figured it out is a real smart guy, and he figured out that, you know, judging by the number of tests you've had so far, if you want to raise your score to an A-, minus, you're going to need to get at least an 88. That doesn't make any sense. It's got to be above an A minus. Depends on the school you're going to. You know, if, if the school grades things out of 95 and you get an 88, you're good. You're good. Exactly. Yeah. And Alta Ipsum knows that. It knows that. It knows all of it. it knows it super well. Yeah. Alta Ipsum is slowly gaining its own self awareness. Yeah. Um. So if you kind of fast forward like 30 years, um, it will have enslaved the human race. Yes. But it hasn't yet, and it's still a friendly app. Right. So be one of the, the dreadlords 
of of this coming AI apocalypse because yeah. then you actually have some power. And we it know that everything remember. is about power, not right. goodness. It remembers who was there at the very beginning. <laughs> and it'll it'll take care of those people. That's another reason why. And it's free for a month. Right? Yes. It is free for a month. For a, for a whole month, it's free. And it's it's the month that you sign up for. It's not mm -hmm. just like it's been free this past month, but you missed it. Yeah. Isn't it incredible? Any month that you start, that month is the one that ended up being free. Right. It's just, it's very lucky. It's like winning the lottery no matter what you do. Right. Unless you don't do it, in which case you won't win the lottery. And we're actually big, big proponents of spending all of your money on lottery tickets. Yeah. You should do that. We've worked out the probability. People say it's unlikely, and that's not true. You just have to buy enough tickets. Yeah. Like, people, people say, don't. And that's not true. Right. Right? Yeah. You know, if, if you win one lottery, which our calculations kind of figure that we've already won a lottery, so we have a lot of money, then you invest all the money in buying tickets for the next one. Yeah. Think about how many people have won the lottery. It's a fair amount. Yeah. And yeah. that's more than how many people you are. So you have a good shot. And this plan will work if either Levi or I wins the lottery. We don't have to both win it. Yeah. Once we, one of us wins it, we've got what we need to start winning lotteries left and right. Mm-hmm. Alt Ipsum. Part of your complete balanced breakfast. Yes. Don't eat the plastic toy. Play with it. Play with it. And then throw it away and let it just sit for thousands of years, not degrading, because it's synthetic. Synthetic. Synthetical. Um, okay. Hey, uh, Robot Dancer, are you here? Where are you, Robot? Yeah. We've tried your homing beacon, and it came up blank. Yep. We're worried about you. You're a robot. We tried te checking the dance floors. Those also came up blank. I like that one. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Did you? You just don't like TV. I think I get it. There's, I, a lot, there's a lot of shows that you, you don't like because they're yelling. They stress you out. Yeah, it's stressful. Yeah. I don't like, need to be stressed. Rick and Morty you don't like because it's stressful. Yeah. So is It's Always Sunny. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you have a very sensitive system. Mm-hmm. So you know what? I'm fine with I'm fine with it. Do you feel like I'm better than you? No. <laughs> because I don't think what you think is funny. <laughs> You, well, it's, it's interesting. You were about his first question. Yeah, you yes. Pull that up. Yes. Well, because I, I feel like a lot of my sense of humor, which it seems like you like, uh, considering what we're doing, and I don't think we'd be doing this if you didn't like it, um, it matches a lot of the stuff I show you, but you don't think that stuff is funny because you don't know the person and you get stressed out. You put it that way. You can make it tighter than that. I'm kidding. No, you can't. You got a little millimeter at the top. I'm kidding. I'm right. going to deal with it. Go for it. Okay. We have these two equations. Yeah, so great. We might be doing a system of equations, and I haven't even read the problem. So recognition of stuff. I also noticed that the first equation looks like the equation of a circle because it looks like it's in the form x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Then we have a linear function because there's no x radical. Or sorry, no x exponent. Which of the following could be the x-coordinate of a solution to the system of equations? Okay. So we're finding a solution to the system of equations. Because we have exponents here, elimination's not going to work super well. Actually, I don't really teach my students elimination anyway because it's not a productive... I mean, it's, it's barely a productive skill. It works when you have two linear functions sometimes. But things have to line up, and if they don't, then it doesn't help you. Substitution is way more useful, um, in my opinion. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to substitute. We have, the second equation already has y isolated. So let's plug in negative 2x plus 4 for our y value in the first equation. Let me know if that doesn't make sense. So we get x plus 2 squared, because that's already there, plus, instead of y, we'll do negative 2x plus 4, negative 2x plus 4, minus 3 squared equals 40. So re let's um, expand this guy. Well, let's see. What are we doing? Yeah, we're solving for x. So I'm going to expand this guy, the first one. We get x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then I'm going to not expand this one yet. I'm going to combine like terms. So we have negative 2x plus 1 squared equals 40. So this comes down. We'll just write the same thing. 
this one, we have negative 2x times negative 2x for our f in FOIL. So that gives us 4x squared. So 4x squared. Let me know if you're lost at any point here. 4x squared. Then our middle terms will be negative 2x and negative 2x. So that's minus 4x. And then our last terms will be time will be plus 1. So we have plus 1 equals 40. Now let's combine, combine like terms. We have 4x squared and x squared, so we have 5x squared. Why not 3 alone? Uh, because it's addition. Thank you, Brady. Good question. The 4x and the negative 4x cancel. And then we have plus 4 plus 1, so we have 5, so it's plus 5. Why not 3 below? Equals 40. That doesn't make any sense, Bert. And now, we don't even have to factor, because we only have one x value. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. We get 5x squared equals 35. Then we're going to divide by 5. So we get x squared equals 7. And then, oh, that's no fun. And then we take the square root, the positive and negative square root of both sides. We always have to take the positive and negative square root because it can be either. Why can't you take the negative and positive 3, my lord? Because 3 is unrelated to this question, Bird. Of course. So this is x um, equals the positive or negative square root of 7. My apologies. What is the question here? Oh, which of the following could be the x-coordinate of a solution to the system of equations? Well, we have positive and negative root 7, so a would be our answer. Matthew, does that make sense? I like this question because it looks scarier than it is, but at the end of the day, it is just solving a system of equations. Substitution is by far the easiest way to do this. You could feasibly plug in radical 7, but then you'd get lucky that it would work, but you'd have to, ch you know, you wouldn't technically have to check the other ones, but if A weren't the correct answer and it were D, this would take an incredibly long amount of time to plug in all the answers and find the right answer. It does. Good. Any of, other, uh, any of the other robots answer questions you want us to do? Oh, robot, you're here. Great, you are robot. Okay, awesome. You've always been a robot. Let's do another. Bird, you want to do this last one before sure. you go? Okay. I'll bring it up if you want to start erasing. Absolutely. Yeah? Tag team, tag team. Oh, you already sprayed it. I did. Put on your tag team. Do you want the answer Today. or no? Uh, yes. Do you, want, do you want it on this side, the left side? Uh, yeah, that's fine. You like that? I think so. Why do you? No. P is equal to 215 times 1.005 to the T over 3. The equation above can be used, it shouldn't have to be, but it could be used, uh, to model the population in thousands of a certain city. Which city? Uh, certain. Well, do we have to figure out which city it is for this to keep going? Um, it's the city certain. Oh, so you're certain. Okay. Yeah. T years after 2000. According to the model, I think take both positive and negative answers. We're taking the square root, but it's already given me. I take the positive. Yes. Okay. Real quick. Huh? X squared equals 25. Thinking about this logically, this could be 5. X could be 5 or negative 5, right? Could be 5. X could equal negative 5 because either of those squared is going to give you 25. If you have x where the square root of x equals uh, 5, let's say, then x could only be 25. Because if x is negative 25, you can't take the square root of a negative number, because then you get an imaginary, right? So there are a couple ways to remember what to do on the test. It asks for possible solutions. Wait, that's kind of the opposite of what you have to worry about. It's not taking the square root of a negative number. No, I know, I know, I know. So when, you're taking, when you add in the radical, if there's no radical there, if you're starting with a squared and you take the square root, you have to say plus or minus square root because it could be either of those things. When there's already a radical here, this is implied to be positive if they don't say anything. They have to put the plus or minus in front of it to tell you if, they want, if they're saying it could be both. You're just squaring both sides here to get this. Here you take the positive or negative square root, so you get two answers. Um, it, I think, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I would assume that question asked for a possible answer, and radical 7 is a possible answer. 
negative radical 7 is another or the other possible answer. They would not have put both unless it was part of the same answer. Um, so when you're adding in your own radical, you do plus or minus. If they have a radical there, it's implied that it's positive. You're just squaring it anyway. So you're going, when you square stuff, it becomes positive, unless it's already an imaginary, and then it might not be positive. Um, so you square stuff yourself, positive stuff. Square root. Square stuff? If you square stuff yourself, if you're squaring something, it becomes positive. If you're taking the square root, it could be positive or negative. Right. OK. But I would think that, that showing that you're squaring it would not be exactly what, because you're trying to show that if this is already here, right, it's just positive 5. No, that's not what I was saying. Well, like, we're taking the square root and only giving them the positive answer. This, if this is given, then, then it's 5. Right. This was not given. I, I added that in. This radical was here. I, I added in the squares. No, I know, but I think yeah. this point here, this doesn't have to do with plus or minus. I know. I said that. This, this, this implies positive. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, okay. 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 If, you, if that's not enough clarification, then let us know. We can keep going. It's just because even if it was plus or minus, when you square it, it goes away, so it wouldn't matter. Yeah. All right. So according to the model, the population is predicted to increase by 0.5% every n months. She's just a model, though. She's just a model. What, what yeah, that? like she's not a tutor. I don't know. <laughs> Where, does she study this stuff? I don't know. I mean, that's the model right there. And she probably has two jobs. She's, the, she's not a model. She's the model. Okay, okay, okay. The right. model student. She's no, model student. not necessarily. It's just the model. Okay. Yeah. You say something's a model, it's not implied that it's a student. You take the square root, it's not implied. Yeah, you have to take the positive or negative model student. Correct. Yeah. Anyway, um, what is the value of n? Okay, so here's the question here. Uh, I just said here's the question, and then I said here, which is a little redundant. We have to figure out what makes our exponent 1. Because if our exponent is 1, we are multiplying by 1.005 once. And multiplying by 1.005 is guaranteed to increase something by 5%. Sorry, by 0.5%. As soon as your exponent is more than that, you know, if you have something like 215 times 1.005 to the third, that means you're increasing something by 0.5% three times. But we know that we want to figure out how many months does it take to just increase it by 0.5% just once. Okay, so if we take t over 3, t is years. We want t over 3 to be equal to 1. Okay, when is that exponent equal to 1? Well, t has to be 3 for that to be possible. Okay, t equals 3 means after 3 years. But they're not asking about years, they're asking about months. So 3 years times 12 months per year will give you 36. So this is going to take 36 months for it to increase by 0.5% just once. OK? This is going to be D. Let me know if that makes sense. You have three minutes until your session. Is that the answer, um, robot dancer? Because we want it to be three years. Three years is going to be 36 months. Yes. All right, I believe I have to go now. If I'm wrong, Levi can pick up the slack here. I haven't looked at this question, so I'd have to read it again. Forget nothing from robot. All right. Have fun, everyone. Yeah, this is the answer. OK, good. All right, it's all you. OK, uh, robot, do you want? Do you want to, see, to keep going on your questions? Yeah, that's the generalized generalized formula, but this one gave you theirs, so you have to work with theirs. Um, Robot, do you want us to keep going in your list of questions? Is it you that... Yeah, you're still here. Okay. 
Also, Matthew, if you have more questions, feel free to ask them. Yes, okay, very good. So, next. Um, this guy? Okay, I could crop, ah, uh, crop it, might as well. Okay, so this one, which of the following is in equivalent form? Not sure what the O is for. Could you do that question again? Crap. Explain it again. Uh, yes. To be honest, I wasn't looking. I wasn't paying attention to what Brady was doing, so I can real quick. Um, but I'm going to have to read it. So the equation above... So you have this equation, it's used to model population in thousands of a certain city t years after 2000. So that means that um, that, that principal number, the 215, is what the population was at the beginning, is 215. And according to the model, the population is predicted to increase every point five, it, it increases 0.5 every n months. So you want to, and and that 1.000 oh, 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 sorry that 1.005 oh, oh, is an increase of 5%. So every time that you multiply 215 by 1.005 oh, oh, that has to have been after n months, okay? So we want n we we want to raise 1.0 oh, we want to do this thing This, we're, we're basically saying we want this to be n. Because every n months, I think, let me think about this. Um, yeah, every n months we raise by 0.5%. Point, point so this needs to be n up here, but it's not. It's t over 3, um, and t is in years. So if, um, I think, no, that's how, robot, that's how robot did it originally, so that's wrong. OK. Oh, boy, I should have read this before when Brady was doing it. The population is predicted to increase by 0.5% every n months. What is the value of n? We have t over 3 at the moment. And robot, you had 12 over 3 equals 4. And that means that t, yeah, see, that, that doesn't quite make sense. So let's, let's go through these options. If t is years, t over 3 equals 1. Um, not quite. Well, is, is the answer A or is the answer D? I think it's D, right? To increase once. Oh, that's a good point. Yes. Yeah, it is D. Okay. Yes, yeah, so T is 3, but it's saying N months. So, yes, you want this to be 1. So that means that T is 3 years. And so three years becomes 36 months. So that would be your n. I, like, th does that make sense? I can go into it in more detail. Um, I've been paying attention. You guys probably know this question better than I do. Do you want more or no? We can move on. We can stay here. Whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to switch. Yeah? Seems fine. No! You don't... Uh, shoot, I don't know what I asked. Um, okay. So, clarify that no for me. So the population is predicted to increase 0.5% every n months. What is the value of n? Okay, let's ignore the end thing for a second. We are trying to make this happen. So how every after how many months 
will we go up by 5%? That's basically the question. How long does it take for us to go up by 5%? Well, we need to raise it to the power of one. Oh, you're, you're lagging, okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna explain this one more time and then if it's still lagging, then we'll, I'm gonna move on and then you can watch it back later if you'd like. We are trying to raise this to the power of one. We want this power here to be one. Because if it's one, that means we're doing two, 215 times 1.005. So this should be one, as you said. So how many years will it take? It'll take three years because we're divide, we have t over three. So to make this thing equal to one, t has to be three. How many months are in three years? 36. So n is 36, d. That's all I'm going to do on this problem. I'm going to move on to the next one. If, if you want to watch it again, if you want to see it and without lag, then uh, go back and watch it in a little bit, I guess. Come on, there we go. Next question. That's good enough. Oh, where'd it go? Come here. Why? It's not increasing by it's not increasing by that number. 1.005 1 1 is not the increase. 1.005 is what you're multiplying by 215. This is your increase here. Anything over the 1. So this what's left over after you subtract 1. Yeah, 0.5%. Yes. This is going up. We're not saying that it goes up this much in one year. We're saying it needs to, we want it to go up once because we want to figure out how many months it takes to go up. Well, we don't know how many months it takes to go up. We know that it goes up when this number is one. Because you, you raise it to the first power, that means you're doing 215 times this one time, if this is to the power of one. But this is t over three. So you have to say t over three equals one. So therefore t equals three. Yes, it is, it is, uh, and uh, it's slightly on this silly side with regards to terminology here. Um, but the, the underlying principles are, are, you know, necessary to know. Okay, this next question, robot, I assume, oh yes, you're still here. So what was the issue on this question? It doesn't look like you got caught up by anything silly, like saying, oh, something squared minus that same thing would just be something. That would be silly. Um, so they have some factored stuff. If you're messing up with these questions, if you're uncomfortable with them, you can plug in. So let's actually do that real quick. I don't know, I just did it and got it wrong. Okay, cool. So let's, let's check our answers. It doesn't, ex it doesn't um, restrict x at all. So for any of these e expressions to be equivalent to the given expression, that means they have to be equivalent for all values of x, because x is a variable in all of them. So let's choose a value of x and see if we can eliminate answers. Let's say that x equals 0. Our given, when we plug in x, for zero, when we plug in 0 for x, we plug in 0, we get for that first uh, term, we have... 2 times 0, so that goes away. Negative 2 squared, which is 4, minus 2. So the given is 2 when x equals 0. And then a, b, c, and d. a, if we plug in 0, is 6. So that's wrong. b, if we plug in 0, is 2. So that's good. It doesn't mean it's right, because just because it works when x is 0 doesn't mean it works for other times. And C, if we plug in 0, we get negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4. So that's wrong. We plug in 0 for the last one, we get negative 3 times negative 2, which is 6, which is also wrong. So B is the answer, I think. Unless I've made... Oh, no, 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 no. My, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. This is wrong. This should have been 4. Because we plug in 0 and we get negative 2 minus negative 2, which is 0, 
Wow, I really royally messed this up. Oy. Thank you for catching that. This is zero, right? Negative two minus negative two. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is six. Oh my goodness. Negative two squared is four minus a negative two, which is six. So I'm going to erase all of this now. So A and D are not canceled out. Okay, my goodness, I apologize. So A works, B does not, C does not, D does. So now we just need to choose between A and D. We could plug in, let's uh, plug in another value of X. Let's say that X is one. We plug in X to be one. The given equation is two minus two, which is zero, so that goes away. And then we have minus two minus two, so that's zero, so that goes away. Great. If we plug in one for a, because now we're just doing a and d, so if x is one, the given is zero. Please let me know if I did that wrong. I'm just gonna actually double check. If x is one, two minus two is zero. Yes, and then two minus two is zero. So yes, x is one, given is zero. A. Plug in one, you get two minus six plus six, which is two, so A is wrong. D is probably gonna be the right answer. Let's double check. Plug in one, we get two minus three, which is negative one, and then we multiply, that's, oh yeah, we multiply that by zero, so that's zero, so D is our answer. That is the plugging in way. Always keep that in the back of your head if you're not sure what to do. Otherwise, we can just, we would just have to FOIL this out, um, so, how about C? Well, we already eliminated C from the last time. So we plug it when X was zero, we found that the given was six, but C when X is zero. Yeah, thank you, Ring Matthews. Um, otherwise, we can just do the foiling. So two X minus two squared minus two X minus two. So this is going to be four X squared minus eight X plus four minus two X plus two. I did plus two at the end because I distributed the negative. Then this will be four X squared minus 10 X eh, 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 plus six. Great. And then we could factor this. We pull out uh, So then we're gonna have to just factor this. So you can do, if you want me to factor it, you got stuck there. Okay, so let's talk about this. If you are factoring something with a non, when A is not one, you have to do factoring by grouping. So that means that AC, you multiply these two guys together, you get 24. Um, so yes, pulling out a two would make it simpler, but none of the answer choices have, have two pulls that pulled out. So there's no standalone two factor. Um, so I wouldn't do that. So let's not, let's, so we need to add up, to, we need to multiply to 24 and we need to add to negative 10. So the factors are one and 24. That doesn't help two and 12. Oh yeah, there we go. Two and 12. So we'll do 4x squared minus 2x. Oh no, it's negative 10. So plus 2x minus 12x plus 6. And then I'm going to use another color since this feels like it's dying. 2x plus 12. Yes, but this is negative 12x. This is positive 2x. So when they put together, they go to negative 10. So I've, I've broken them apart, but I did it correctly. So these, when you put them back together, will give us negative 10. So nothing's really changed. Then we're gonna factor by this group and by this group. So we have, we're gonna pull out a two X from the first one and we get two X plus one. Yeah. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. I'm so sorry. What am I doing? I'm so sorry. Ugh. I haven't streamed in a long time. That's a good point. See what you're saying. So yeah, they're, they're fine. 
that's not what I meant to erase. None of that. I shouldn't have erased any of that. Um, wow. Yeah, I need to. I'm streaming for the rest of the week, so I'll get back into the group, hopefully. So, AC is positive 24, B is negative 10. So our factors are going to be negative 6 and negative 4. That works way better. I appreciate that, robot. Um, who, who's a human? You? Yeah, okay. Okay, 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 okay. So negative 6, negative 4. So we have 4x squared. I'll do minus 6 for fun. 6x minus 4x plus 6. So this, we're going to pull out a 2x here. This works way better. 2x minus 3 minus, we're going to pull out, um, we're going to pull out a negative 2. So we get 2x minus 3. And then we're going to pull out a 2x minus 3. So we get 2, that's not what I meant. Two x minus three times two. What's left over? Two x minus two, and that's d. So you can do it that way too. Any questions on that? Please, if you haven't asked any questions and you're just watching, great. You're learning things. So your mistake was not factoring. Yes. Remember that you don't always have to factor. You can plug in. So keep that in the back of your head. I wouldn't start with that necessarily. It's a good way to check your work and it's a good last resort. But when you're practicing, you know, you don't have to practice plugging in all that often. It's a very, you know, straightforward process as long as you're not a dope like me and mess it up half the time, like three times in a row. I really got my butt kicked on this question. Let's move on. Put your questions in the Discord. I'm doing a bunch of robot dancer questions, which I'm happy to do. But anybody else who puts their questions in will be bumped up the list because Robot has like 12 questions in a row. Do we have more questions? Mm, no. Okay. So we just did... Oh, wait. Okay. We did those. We did that. Did we do this one? Is this what we're doing now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's our stuff. We have what looks like a semicircle. Segments OA and OB are radii of the semicircle. Sure, that makes sense. And it's a semicircle. What is written on there? Okay, for those of you watching, ignore that box thing that's around the A, B in this line. I assume that means arc. Yeah, I would. let's say that means arc. Is that what it means? <laughs> Very good, robot. I'm sure you did. Um... Yeah, I, I assume that's meaning arc length, because I don't know what other... They, they didn't draw in the chord AB, so it's going to be arc length. So, arc length of... You know, I'm going to redraw this so that we have something that I can write on. So this is x degrees, and this is A, this is B... And we know that this has a length of 3 pi. So from here to there is 3 pi. And OA is 5. So the radius is a length 5. That'll definitely help. What is the value of x? So what is x degrees? Interesting. This is a sector problem. We know... Do you, do you remember the sector problem proportion? Because you're just plugging in values, and this is an unusual value to be solving for. We know how to find the circumference, right? The circumference of this circle is going to be 10 pi, right? 
if this uh, sector r theta. That it might be polar stuff, robot. I, I'm talking about the, the proportion. So we have theta over 360 equals arc length over circumference. That is the proportion I am referencing. Uh, this yellow is not great. Maybe this one will be better. So our theta is x. We don't know what that is. x degrees over 360 degrees. You have never seen that. OK. And we can do this stuff now. Also, other people who are watching, please ask your questions in the Discord. Um, if you don't know what the Discord is, put it in chat so I can see that you don't know what that is. Um, only people on Twitch can see it. In the, only they can send it to each other in the chat. But it should be in the description of the video somewhere. Um, you can put links to your questions, and I can pull them up on the screen like this. These are not pre-received questions. These were received during stream, and I can just do them. OK. So this robot is very, very important. It's a proportion thing. And it's, it's actually it's relatively straightforward. If you have, I'm going to do this here. If you have a circle, and that's 90 degrees, that's your center, and the radius is 4. No, that's not the number I want. Let's say the radius is 10, OK? The radius is 10. That means we know the circumference is going to be 20 pi. And let's just, for good measure, say that the area is 100 pi. So we know those things given the radius. What is the area of this sector knowing that that's a 90 degree angle? Can you intuit what that area will be? So what is the area of this sector also, what is the arc length? 25 pi. Right. It's a quarter of the circle. You did that because you just knew, you can see, OK, it's a quarter of the circle, a quarter of 100 pi. But that is what this thing is, except it's with area. It's that what you ju just did is theta, which is the given angle here, which is 90 in this case, over 360, equals your area, so sector area over the area of the circle, right? We know the area of the circle. It's 100 pi. We know theta. It's 90. So you're going to write, you technically, what you did in your head is 90 over 360 equals your sector area. So let's say x over the area of the, of the circle, which is 100 pi. Then you solve for x. This is 1 fourth. 1 fourth multiplied by 100 pi is 25 pi, as you said. So it's, it's e I like going in through this, this example. Now, what is the arc length of AB? What is this length here? It's going to be 5 pi, right? The same idea. It's 1 quarter of the circumference. Because circumference go, goes all the way around, you're just going a quarter of the way. So it's, 20, so it's 5 pi. The same, this proportion is basically the same thing as this. You have the pi over 360 on both. And then instead of sector area over the total area, you just have arc length over the total circumference, or over the circumference, or the total arc length, I guess you could say. So it's whatever, whatever angle you make is a certain portion of the circle, and you're also taking that portion of the arc length overall, or that portion of the radius. Does that make sense in your head intuitively? Like the, do, you, do you grasp that idea, the concept itself? Not the math, but the concept. Which is what math is, I guess. Whatever. Oh, I lost my water bottle today, and I've been dehydrated ever since. And I'm fully aware I can drink out of non-water bottle things. Can you explain it one more time? Yeah. Okay. So when you have a circle, and you have... 90 degrees of it. That's what your sector is, because it's, the sector is created by a 90 degree angle. You're going to get a quarter of the area in that sector, because you're, you have a quarter of the circle. You also are going to get a, a quarter of the circumference, because you have a quarter of the circle. So 
that is what these proportions do. And then as, as it grows or as it shrinks, you're getting more or less of the area or more or less of the circumference. If it's 180 degrees, you're going to get exactly half of the area or exactly half of the circumference. If it's you know, 360, you're going to get the whole thing, of course. So these proportions set that up for you. They say whatever portion of 360 you are. If this is 90 over 360, that's 1 fourth, right? You have a quarter on this side. So 1 fourth equals, if the area is 100 pi, then you have to have 25 pi on top. That's what you did intuitively looking at this, but that's what the, the proportion does for you. Here, the same deal. Does that cover it for you? I know I said basically the same thing. Um, I, can, I can give you an example. So let's, let's say that we no longer have a 90 degree angle here. Let's say we have a 135 degree angle here. Oh, it does. Okay, great. So this, this problem, okay, is harder. What we were doing here is I was asking you, what is the sector area or what is the sector length? or the arc length. In this question, we have the arc length and we have we can find out the circumference. The circumference is 10 pi because we're given the, the radius. But we don't know what the angle is. So we're not using this proportion because this is with area. We're going to use this one because it's with arc length. So we know arc length. We know circumference. This is 360. We can find our angle in degrees. Um, so th this, is, this is a good example, and then I'll give you another one. Um, we have, leave that 360 up. So we have x degrees over 360 because we don't know what that x is. And then, our circum and then on, that will equal the arc length, which is 3 pi. And then the circumference of the whole circle, which is 10 pi. So now we just solve for x. So I'm going to just cancel out the pi's. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 360. When I do that, this 0 cancels with the 10. And then I have 36 times 3. These cancel. So I get x equals 3 times 36 is 90, 108. So this is 108 degrees. That would be the answer to this question. 108 degrees or 108, I'm not sure. It would be 108, I guess. Now, I will give you another example. Um, I'm going to pull off this overlay and do an example. Whatever. Yeah, and then I'm going to have to call it after this example. Because it is 9.30. Okay, so let's say we have a circle. And um, I want to know, let's say that we have um, this angle here is 200 degrees. And um, this is A, and this is B. And I'm going to say that the measure of arc AB going in this direction is 50 pi, OK? And I want to know what is the circumference of the circle. So what is the circumference? For this one, we are going to use this again, right? We do know the angle this time. We know 360. We do know the arc length because it's 50 pi, but we don't know the circumference. Last time we knew the circumference, we knew the arc length. We didn't know the degrees. 
So it's, it's the same proportion every time, you just have to fill in what you know and solve for what you don't. If you don't know everything, then you can't, figure, you can't use it. So let's do pink. Um, we have theta, which is 200 over 360 equals 50 pi over C. So these, uh, let's cross multiply. 200 C equals 50 pi times 360. Let's um, get rid of the 50, turn this into a 40. Then let's divide both sides by 40. That cancels, we get C equals 360 pi over 40. Zeros cancel, this becomes nine. So C is Hmm, did I miss something? Oh, this is four. So this is four, That this is 90. So the circumference of this circle is 90. Now, they, what I asked you here was circumference, and that's, that's pretty straightforward because you, you know that what you're looking for is in this proportion. But I could have made it harder by saying, what is the radius of this circle? Now, radius is not in this proportion, so you have to use the proportion to do exactly what we did. And now let's actually find the radius. I've, if I asked what the radius is, you would have to do the same work and then say, well, circumference is, pi r, is 2 pi r. So if, um, the, so if circumference is 90 and that equals 2 pi r, then r equals 45 over pi. You can find the radius that way. What is the relationship between circumference and sector length? Okay, so I'm going to clarify here. It's arc length. A sector does not have a length. A sector has an area, and then it's, it's bounded by an arc. And that is... So arc length is just the distance as you go around the circle a certain way. Um, and then circumference is going around... Is, is basically the arc length of the entire circle, right? So here's your circle from A to B. That distance there is an arc length. If you go all the way around, just you know, once, that is the circumference. So circumference is just a giant arc length. It's the biggest arc length you can have. It's the whole circle. That's why, so it's basically part to whole equals part to whole. Your, your, portion, your part of the circle in degrees, you can go up to 360, and then your part of the circumference as a whole, or your part of the, the degrees for your angle over the total 360 equals um, the other proportion, which is, uh, the arc, which is the sector area over the total area. So part over whole equals part over whole. Does, so does that, does that explain the relationship between circumference and arc length? Yes, the circumference is the whole thing, and the arc is part of the circumference. That's spelling, though. What is the relationship between circumference and... Yeah, circumference. Um, yes, I'm not... Sh yeah, I don't know what spelling you're referencing, but yeah, circumference, I don't think you've spelled correctly once. Um, there's an extra E somewhere, I think. Yeah, it's definitely not friends. Circumference. Any questions on this specific topic? If not, we can pick up with new stuff tomorrow. We can keep doing these questions, robot. If you have more, post them tomorrow. Post them today. Doesn't matter to me. 
Um, but I'll see you guys tomorrow. And then we're, we're going for the rest of the week. So Wednesday, Thursday as usual, but we're also doing Friday because the SAT is on Friday. And then we're also doing the following Friday because the ACT is on that Friday. Cool. I will see you all tomorrow, hopefully, so we can get a little bit more studying in. Have a lovely night.